So I'm prepping the table and workspace for the fuselage. So now I've added this 8 foot extension to the 10 foot table, so I got 18 foot of table. I've leveled it, so now I'm going to make it all white. Starting on the top fuselage frame, and uh, so I've got my clean slate table here, and I put a center line down it. So this will be the front. So I'm going to put a line across perpendicular to the center line. That'll be the the firewall reference line. print laid out on the table for the top. I'm now putting blocks on to hold the tubes in the correct position. For the outside lawn drones. So I'm ready to bend the lawn drones and this is my setup I've come up with. So I've got the 20 foot long three quarter inch tubes suspended at the right elevation for this bender. And I'll bring you down here so you can see what's going on. So this is my setup to bend the uh, lingeron. The very first bend here is only about 10 degrees. Well, the other one's even less. But um, basically, I'm using a conduit bender. I've shimmed the tube up to the center line of the bender so I can lay all, it all flat on the table. I clamp the tube to this two by six here just so that it'll act like the floor. It'll be able to keep that section straight while I bend this. And um, I am going to use a clamp on here to try to keep this tight against there. Ten marks right there, we won't have to go very far. We'll see how it goes. Alright, so here's the bending rig. I've already bent the first bend. It worked okay. It produced a decent bend. Um, so basically, I've got a 2x6 there that I can clamp this tube to with this block here. This block has a, a contour in it that shape, profile the shape of the tube just so it will hold it nicely in place. I've got it all shimmed up off the table the same height as the bender wants to be at which happened to be three quarters of an inch which is great. Um, I do have match marks up here so that after I make a bend I can come back and put it in the setup exactly the same if I just want a little more. You know? So anyhow, these two clamps across here, they're just to try to keep the bender up against this so that it doesn't try to rise up and you produce a really large radius. This is a six inch radius already. We don't want it, I don't really want a big one and I want to control where the bend's at. So anyhow, as I bend, I mark it on the table how far I took it. So I know I need another degree or two. So all I have to do now, because everything's back in the same spot as the first time I bent it, is come down here give it some force and take it a little bit further and then I'll mark it so that if I have to do it again I know exactly where I was There's that block, you can see it's a piece of oak that has a three-quarter inch uh, profile. And the elevation's three-quarters of an inch, so it works really well to just hold on to the tube. So there's the tube in the form. It fits. But here's the tube after bending. So it fits pretty good. It's got its little jog in there. It just needs the curve down the, the far end. For down this end, where there's this gentle curve, I, uh, I have the front of it all blocked and uh, clamped in place so it can't move this way. And I'm just bending it. And I'm pretty much there almost. In fact, I've gone over a little bit here. No big deal. We are really 
close. So there's the first line drawn to the top in place and blocked and all bent. So now I'll just make one more. So I trimmed off the two lingerons at the tail post. I'm not going to fit this tube now for the uh, tail post. I'll do that after this is jigged up above the lower. Uh, that way all the angles would be correct and I'll have plenty of uh, meat here to work with. So anyhow, I can actually tack this now and work forward putting in all the two cross tubes. So what I'm going to do actually though right now is clean this up with a wire wheel, clean up all the locations where tubes meet so it's all ready for welding and then I'll start fitting tubes. So I fitted this first tu tube in the back. I am um, starting from the rear and working my way forward and um, I tacked that one in place. So now I just fitted this one that goes across here. I won't put that in place quite yet because it would be very difficult to get the diagonal out. So I'm going to take him out, work on the diagonal, when I get the diagonal to fit nicely then I can tack this in and this in at the same time. So this is the cross tube and I'll just take these blocks and slide them on. I'm going to lock one down on this end. On this end I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just putting them an inch and a half from the end because I found that works really well for uh, having an, enough room to work but not so much that it's hanging out and wants to bend or flex. And I just push down a little bit so that they both end up squared at the table. Now I can clamp it in the device and the two ends will come out exactly the same as far as this way. The first thing I'm going to do is figure out what this angle is to, to this uh, brace here because he's perpendicular to the center line. Alright, so with the pipe in there, I'm going to just bring the end mill up here in the middle of the vise and eyeball it. I mean, for what we're doing, it doesn't need to be within a thousandth or anything. And then bring it back, and I'll come down here and decide where I'm going to cut. That's a good starting place. And then I'm just going to take a couple little Alright, so here's the tube I just coped, and it is a little off on the angle, but it's pretty good. Length is getting there. It's not too bad. In fact, I don't think I need to change anything right now. So I'm going to go back and go a little sharper angle on this cope, and then we'll be on to this one. tube now, it all fits really nice. So I'm going to take these off 
and block it up and I will tack in this cross brace and this cross brace here. So now that I've moved towards the nose, I'm getting into some larger tubing. This tube's 7 8 and I need blocks for each tubing size. So I started 3D printing these larger ones, and that works fine. Um, they just really help me keep the tube from getting a twist in it. And uh, when I get to the large, there's a 1 and 3 8 tube. I'll do that one by hand probably because I can have other ways to keep it all in line. But uh, for a guy like me who doesn't do this every day, this is just a, like an, a crutch that really helps. And I realize my methods aren't the fastest, but uh, I have very, very little scrap, and uh, I'm able to make small adjustments and get things to line up perfectly, which is what I want. So now that I'm putting in these tubes up here that are thicker, I can't leave this tube flat on the table. So I'm going to use some of the blocks I had from making the the elevators and, and trap it like this. Then it'll be able to move up and down, especially since the next tube is one and three eighths, but it'll still maintain the tube on the center line. So I'm just going to replace these blocks with, uh, like I said, these, these taller ones that are on the sides. I've got the tubing coped and has a nice fish mouth to fit on there and, and the distance between the two longerons is correct. But I've got to take care of this gap right here. So I'm going to crush the tube down here so it's flat, comes down in and meets, and i got a nice area to weld. So in order to crush this, I made this little fixture. It's just a couple pieces of oak with a hinge on the back and need some ears so it doesn't fall in the vise. I'm going to put the tube in here and crush that end for a first step to get it down flat. I'm just going to put it in and then just give it a good bend. I'll go back and forth a few times until I get it the way I want it, but it's not a lot of high techness to it, it's just bend it. All right, so it has a pretty good bend now, so I'm pretty happy with that. So now all I need to do is flatten out these ends because they have this, uh, you know, kind of goes in in the middle profile. All right, so now I have this all flattened and straightened out. Now I've messed up the radius here. But no big deal. I'll put it in the mill, bring the end mill into it, and just come to the back here. And then the centers will still be correct for the three-quarter inch tubes on the longerons, and that'll make this fit properly. see how this fits. So it goes in there. Looks like a good fit to me. So I'll bring the camera over here. So now I have the two large tubes in position on the fuselage. Um, I'm going to attack this back one in. I think this is O. Nope, this is N, station N. And then uh, I can work on these cross braces. And then uh, I'll still be able to move this guy around to uh, get him in.
I got this front tube here complete. And this one's already tacked in. I'm just doing these two uh, cross tubes that go this way. And it's got to the point where I can knock one of these out in about 15 minutes, so that's not too bad. Probably could go faster, but I'm trying to get a really good fit. So anyhow, I'll start working on the nose part. All right, I can live with that corner. So now I'm on to these cross little truss braces here. So I always have all these little off cuts and tubes. And what I do is label them all so that later on when I need something, I can go to my pile of off cuts and very quickly find what I have. I don't have to bring the calipers and try to figure out if it's an 035 or an, with a burr or if it's an 049 or and reinforcing the joints a little better so that I can uh, take all these blocks off and flip it over and do the other side. So here's another cluster that I uh, have tacked up in place. So I put a fairly substantial tack in the inside corners and then I have the smaller tacks from the original. That should suffice to get this thing to be uh, strong enough to be able to be turned around and manipulated. So I finished all the tack welding. I've taken all the blocks off now. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this over and tack all the other side. So I finished tack welding the other side of the top and picked it up off the table and put it here against the wall where it's going to stay until it's ready to be made it up to the bottom. So that's it for the top part for now. I'll go on to the bottom.